Here's the deal. What do the Yankees, Woody Allen, and this guy comparing outdoor dining to a home invasion all have in common? The answer? They've all come before their respective community boards to speak their minds. Woody Allen was objecting to a new bike lane proposal. A representative on behalf of the New York Yankees baseball organization was discussing stadium renovation plans, and this guy? Well, I get the sense he's not too fond of outdoor dining. But what are community boards? Let's find out. Community boards are advisory groups that can enable city government to better respond to local concerns. There are 59 community boards across the five boroughs, with each having some degree of autonomy. This means that they are not all the same, so I'm going to focus instead on the bigger picture. Each community board can have up to 50 members. These members are not elected, but instead are approved by the borough president, which is an elected position. Being on a community board is a two-year, unpaid position. These terms are staggered, though, so that every year there is an opportunity for new community board members to be brought on. To apply to be on a community board, one must be a resident of New York City, at least 16 years old, and either live, work, or have a significant interest in the community board area for which they are applying. City council members are also able to nominate constituents to become community board members, although the borough president has the final say. City council districts and community board districts are not contiguous, so the number of nominations from a sitting member of the city council is proportioned depending on how much of the city council district overlaps into a community board district, although no city council member may nominate more than 25 people. Members of city council also sit ex officio on community boards that fall within their districts. Although being a community board member is unpaid, each community board has a small staff to coordinate logistics. Every community board is led by a chair, who must be a community board member themselves, elected by other community board members. Community boards have various committees to focus on specific parts of their districts, although each community board determines the focus of each committee. The scope of these committees can vary depending on the district. For example, Queens Community Board 14 has an environmental committee and a parks and public safety committee, whereas the Bronx Community Board 11 has a parks and recreation committee, a sanitation and environmental protection committee, and a public safety committee, whereas Staten Island Community Board 2 only appears to have an environmental protection and parks committee. It is useful to draw a distinction between soft power and hard power. Community boards have very little hard power. In general, they can make strong recommendations, but have no power to actually enact them. However, what they exceed in is soft power. When community boards speak, city agencies and elected officials listen. Let's say there's a community board meeting and someone complains about a pothole. The community board cannot force the Department of Transportation to fix the problem, but in all likelihood the DOT would end up prioritizing the pothole in question. Why? Because no city agency wants to have extra scrutiny. Of course, this soft power is not absolute. For example, in 2015, 50 of 59 community boards infamously voted against an affordable housing plan, but the de Blasio administration went ahead with it anyway. That is not to say that community boards have no influence, but it is worth remembering that they have their limits. With this in mind, community boards are required to be consulted for certain issues, which include but are not limited to liquor licenses, bike lanes, permits for block parties or street fairs, and the placement of or modification to most municipal facilities. Even in cases where consultation is not required, many departments, businesses, individuals, or other entities will voluntarily approach community boards anyway in order to keep the community in the loop, and also to avoid blindsiding those with soft power. In the lengthy process of crafting the city budget, which perhaps I'll talk about more in the future, Community boards are tasked with setting budget priorities, which are recommended to the mayor. The mayor's final budget proposal must have each department demonstrating how these priorities have been represented. Another lengthy process, the Uniform Land Use Review Procedure, or ULERP, requires community board input. Of course, the final decisions are made within the City Planning Commission or the City Council. Community boards are able to craft their own plans for projects within their districts, and the City Planning Commission can then approve the Office of Environmental Coordination to conduct an environmental impact analysis at no cost to the community board. This does not mean that community boards will be able to actually implement these plans, but covering the cost of an environmental impact study does remove a huge hurdle for any proposal to be viable. Last, remember that there are 59 different community boards, and they all do things somewhat differently. 
Some organize tenants' associations, while others coordinate neighborhood cleanup programs. It all depends on the needs of the district. Each community board must meet once per month. At the time of writing, many if not most community boards are either all virtual or hybrid due to the ongoing COVID-19 global pandemic. This has led to a sharp increase in participation in community board meetings, although all virtual meetings are in a bit of a tricky legal area. You see, they are not technically allowed under New York State's open meetings law. But at the beginning of the pandemic, then-Governor Andrew Cuomo's state of emergency declaration enabled community boards to go all virtual. There are several proposals to amend the open meetings law to better accommodate for virtual meetings going forward. In any case, members of the public are free to attend community board meetings. How each meeting is run will depend on who's running it, but you're almost certainly guaranteed to hear some valuable perspectives about the goings-ons in your community. Let's review. There are 59 community boards across New York City, with a maximum of 50 members on each. Any New York City resident 16 or older who works, lives, or has a significant interest in the district can apply. City council members can nominate some people, but each borough president ultimately makes the determinations. Community board members serve staggered two-year terms. Various statutes mandate that community boards be consulted about some issues, such as rezoning or bike lines, even if they do not have the final say. Although community boards lack hard power, they have the ears of elected officials and citywide departments.